So welcome to this module on ISO 25010. The content in this explanation of ISO 25010 is directly from the standards document. Since these are mostly definitions, they have been reproduced without much change for the sake of precision. This presentation is made for educational purposes only. So ISO 25010 is a standard for the quality dimension of uh, a software system. The title is System and Software Engineering System and Software Quality Models. The first edition came in 2011. So it has two parts to it. One is called the quality in use model and the other is the product quality model. Quality in use model relates to interaction when a product is used in a particular context as the name suggests. It has five characteristics, we will see them and some sub characteristics. The product quality model is about the properties of the software product or the system. It has eight characteristics and of course some sub characteristics. So it has two dimensions. When you use the system, what are the quality parameters that come into play and the system itself, what quality parameters does it have. It does not address quality issues related to functional requirements or compliance with uh, the standards or the laws of the land. It does not talk about documentation and support training or estimations and budget and project timing and so on. Where is this uh, standard uh, useful? It is useful for identifying quality requirements of software, you can use it for design objectives, you can use it for testing, you can use it for quality control as part of the quality assurance scenarios, you can use it for acceptance and you can of course establish measures for quality characteristics of the system. So the quality in use model has these five sub characteristics, satisfaction, context coverage, freedom from risk, efficiency and effectiveness and satisfaction has further sub characteristics called usefulness, trust, pleasure and comfort. Context coverage is divided into context completeness and flexibility. The freedom from risk characteristic has three sub characteristics, economic risk mitigation, healthy and safety risk mitigation, health and, safe, health and safety risk mitigation, environmental risk mitigation and of course effectiveness and efficiency stand on their own. The product quality has eight parameters, usability, performance efficiency, security, maintainability, reliability, portability, compatibility and functional suitability. And each one of them has sub characteristics. So this is a long list of uh, quality characterizations. So we will painfully go through each one of them. This is an important diagram. This will tell us what each of these product quality model and the quality in use model trying to address. So if you see here, we have the subsystem, let us say this is the software that is developed. The software is sitting in a target computer system, it is part of an information system. This computer system is part of an information system, there may be other subsystems and this information system is being used by a set of humans, so there is a context. It, it is part of a user usage environment and there are various kinds of users. Now the product quality model is talking about issues related to the software and the computer system. You can see the arrows coming to these two boxes. The quality in use model is talking about the target software the target computer system, the information system in which the target computer system is a part of and the usage environment and the users as well. 
So let us go through each one of them in some detail. So the in use quality model has as we have seen has these 5 characteristics satisfaction, context coverage, freedom from risk, efficiency and effectiveness. Now effectiveness is about accuracy and completeness with which users achieve their specific goals. You must keep in mind one simple point. The definitions, the, the names that are given to these quality attributes are actually very, very appropriate. Very often you can guess what this is quality attribute is about by the common sense understanding of the word. Okay. So effectiveness quality attribute is talking about how accurate and complete is the software is help me achieve the goal that I am interested in. Okay. You can actually define it as degree to which I can achieve my goal. Now efficiency deals with resources expended in relation to the accuracy and completeness with which users achieve their goal. So what kind of resources are considered? You can talk about uh, human resources, you can talk about materials, you can talk about the cost and so on. So the other property we have in in use quality model is satisfaction. Satisfaction has talks about usefulness, trust, pleasure and comfort. Now satisfaction is generally about is the user happy with the product that is so it is talking of a product or a system in a specified context of use and if the user needs are met or not how satisfied is the user. So it is the user's response to interact with the product or the system satisfaction is the response of the user. So there are four sub characteristics it can be divided into four sub characteristics usefulness, trust, pleasure and comfort. Now usefulness is about if the goals are achieved or not trust is the confidence that the user has on the product and pleasure is is he having fun while using the product or is it very painful to use the product very often we do not go and uh, run some system or software because it is a tedious painful process. So pleasure sub characteristics actually tries to characterize that. Comfort is how easy or difficult in terms of physical comfort to handle the software system. So these four characteristics are form part of what is called satisfaction which is a in use quality characteristic. So the next one is what is called freedom from risk. Freedom from risk actually has three sub characteristics related to economics, health and environment. So essentially we are talking about is there any risk in using the software. So a simple example is let us say I am making a, a purchase an e-commerce transaction. Now it is is it possible that my credit card, credit card credentials will be compromised. Okay. That means there is a risk involved. How well is the system taking care of it? If I try to operate this computer system, is it possible I will get an electric shock? So there is there is a health or safety risk there. So these kinds of issues also have to be considered and how free is the system from such risks. So the next sub characteristics of in use quality is context coverage. Essentially it is talking about how complete is the context that is being addressed that is context completeness and it is talking about how flexible is the coverage. So flexibility actually enables products to take into account circumstances which may not have been anticipated in advance. Very often you will not be able to think of all the use cases that may encounter and is the system still usable to what extent is the system usable in such anticipated or circumstances which have not been designed for. So that is flexibility. The issue is when I am using it in an unintended environment I should not be compromising on safety so that is to be addressed. So again we can say it is we can characterize it as degree to which it is safe. 
So that was about in use quality. Now we will talk about product quality. Product quality is quite comprehensive as we have seen in this diagram. It was talking about multiple aspects of the system. So there are eight sub characteristics usability, performance, security, maintainability, reliability, portability, compatibility and functional suitability. Let us look at each one of them. So functional suitability. So what does functional suitability do? It basically deals with functional completeness, correctness and appropriateness. Is the set of functions given complete? Do they do what they are intended to do, what they are intended for? And are they appropriate at that particular context? So essentially it is talking about does it meet the stated and implied needs that is about functional suitability. So this is a quality attribute of any product. Now the next one is performance, it is called performance efficiency. Performance efficiency has three aspects to it. One is time behavior, other is resource utilization and then capacity. As we can easily understand its relative performance is about the resources that are being consumed. Now the time behavior part of it deals with response time, processing time and throughput rates of the system. The resource utilization talks about the amount of resource that is being consumed and what kinds of resources are being consumed. The capacity issue is interesting, degree to which the maximum limits of a product or system parameter meets requirements. Okay. So uh, very often when I am talking of a changing uh, computer system or software system, uh, capacity is, a, is an issue. It is also actually a quality attribute in the domain and it, the domain quality attribute for example if I am interested in writing some banking software, uh, the domain person will say look I would like I am interested in uh, taking it to 250, 200,000 branches. Today I have only 1000 branches but very soon I will, I want my software system, I am, that is my capacity, I want my software system to expand to that capacity. So the domain people also use this term. So the next uh, software attribute we will look at is compatibility. Compatibility has two uh, sub characteristics, coexistence and interoperability. So essentially the software system is working in the context and it should be able to work with the other components that are there in, this, in the system and it should be able to exchange information with it. So that is what we call uh, compatibility captured under coexistence and interoperability. This is a very important quality attribute usability. Now it deals with how effectively and efficiently is the, is the user able to use the system. Now it has several sub characteristics. These are appropriateness recognizability which is talking about is the product appropriate for the needs. Am I trying to cut an apple with the scissors or am I using a knife? You can see it is obviously a function of first impressions. When I look at some software and I say you can use this for some word processing or you can use it for creating a, a web page, I will immediately form my own impressions on whether this is the right one for me or not. So when I, I might look at a demo of the software, some video clip, then that will immediately give me some ideas. So am I able to recognize the fact that this software is appropriate for me? So it is actually an important aspect. It should not only be appropriate, but the user should be able to see quickly that it is the right software. Okay, it is a subtle but very interesting and important point. If it is not recognized, if the appropriateness is not recognized immediately, you might lose the user. 
The second one is about learning curve, what how big is, is it difficult or easy to learn to user error protection, interface aesthetics and accessibility. So, operability is about how easy or difficult it is to use in terms of attributes that it has, shortcuts maybe are an example of to make it operable. Am I likely to make mistakes while using the software that is about error protection. Interface aesthetics are about is it pleasing to look at and accessibility is actually a very, very important point in, uh, in user interface design. Uh, it dominates usability issues. My favorite example of uh, usability is um, colors that you use on a user interface. Suppose you have red buttons with green background on them with the letters written on the button is red and the letters, the labels on the button are green. So, 10 percent of the males will not be able to see it because they are red, green, blind. Okay, that is a usability issue and of course, we are also talking about more serious disabilities and how do, is the software capable of adopting to such scenarios. So, that is about usability. The next quality attribute is reliability. Now, this is obviously a very, very important point. If the system is not reliable, you will not use it. It talks about essentially is the system operable for a certain period of time that is the expected specified period of time. It has four characteristics. One is maturity. We say a system is mature, this operating system is mature, this word processor is mature, the browser is mature. By that I mean this is it is evolved through various uh, versions and more often than not it does not crash right we, we know that. So, more strictly speaking the maturity of a system is defined as the reliability that the system has under normal operation. The concept of maturity of course, can be assigned to other uh, quality attributes as well. Uh, essentially the degree to which they meet requirements under normal operations. We are talking of normal operations mind you. The next sub characteristic of reliability is availability. How much is it operational and accessible when required for use? When I need the system to use it should be available. So, essentially we are talking of proportion of the time to which the system is up. Then we have fault tolerance and recoverability as sub characteristics of reliability. So, fault tolerance is even if there is a small failure somewhere, it should continue to work. If I give a print command and the printer is down, my system should not cease. If the network is down and I am trying to access the network, my process should not cease. So, the ability to recover from a crash is the recoverability. So, these four characteristics maturity, availability, fault tolerance and recoverability make the quality attribute called reliability. Security, again this is a very important uh, quality attribute. If the system is not secure, you will not use it. So, it should protect information and data, so that others have the degree of data access appropriate to the type of type and levels of authorization. So, somebody who is not authorized to access should not be able to access, appropriateness is an issue. So, it is not just about data sitting on your on the machine or the system, but also it is while the data is moving over the wire, it should be still secure. So, security has five sub characteristics. These are confidentiality, integrity, non-repudiation, non accountability and authenticity. Let us see. Confidentiality ensures that the data is accessible only to those who have permission to access, okay. confidential information. There are there may be levels of access rights and only those people who are entitled to access should get access that is confidentiality. Integrity is it cannot be changed easily, should not be changed without authorization that is integrity of data. 
when I store something in the machine I expect it to be there untouched and modified as I had put it. Non repudiation is interesting if somebody accesses the system let us say makes places a call places, places an order and subsequently says I have not placed the order I should be able to say no you have placed the order the order came from these credentials which are yours. So that is non repudiation accountability is can the actions of an entity be traced uniquely to that entity okay he you have done it so you are accountable to the action and authenticity is can the subject or resource can be proved to be the one you claim you know I claim to be somebody and uh, how do I make sure you are somebody I need to be able to evaluate your cred credentials. So security has these uh, five characteristics authenticity, accountability, confidentiality, integrity and non repudiation okay. Let us move on to maintainability it is basically about how difficult is it to maintain the software. The modifications that you may make to the software may include corrections, improvements or adaptions you may actually make changes in the environment and in some of the requirements and function specifications. So I should be able to change maintain the software make change the software modify the software to handle these. It also includes upgrades and updates it can be interpreted either as an inherent capability of the facility maintenance activities or the quality in use experienced by the maintainers. So maintainers are one of the stakeholders and what is, they, what is it that they experience while they are dealing with this system. So maintainability has several sub characteristics these are modularity, reusability, analyzability, modifiability and testability. Modularity is about is the system modular or not how well designed the system is this obviously a well a modular system is easy to change you can change a particular module and there would not be any propagation of changes. Reusability is one of the assets let us say one of the modules can be reused in another subsystem in constructing a different asset okay, that is reusability. This is a very very well researched topic and uh, it is not easy to build a component which is reusable that is the lesson that has been learned by the software engineering community. Analyzability is about if I make a change to one asset one module one subsystem can I figure out what are the other parts that I that get affected that is analyzability unless I can figure out I will not have confidence in the in the change that I have made so that is an aspect of maintainability. So modifiability is the ease with which it can be modified to without change without introducing defects or degrading the system now you will encounter it in coding and designing and uh, making change while verifying changes and so on. So you can see modifiability is probably a very important uh, aspect of maintainability the system each component I should be able to make change changes to it without encountering degrading my existing system or introducing defects. And finally the testability attribute is about how easy it, easy it is to establish test criteria and performance test to check if the criteria are met. I am building a system how do I define uh, the test parameters of the system okay that is established test criteria and after that I should be able to measure the uh, parameters of interest and that is check if the criteria are met or not. So maintainability has these five characteristics testability, modifiability, analyzability, reusability and modularity okay 
a system which is modular, which has reusable components, is easy to analyze, is modifiable and is testable, scores high on maintainability. Okay, that is the idea. The next quality attribute in the product quality is portability. Portability again has some sub characteristics, but portability essentially is about how easy it is to, it is to transfer from one hardware or software to another environment. So, the three characteristics of portability are adaptability, installability and replaceability. So, adaptability talks about ease of adaption for different or evolving hardware, software and other operational usage environments. A nice example is screen. When the screen sign changes, does the website still look the same? Okay. If it does, is there degradation in, in the understanding of what is being presented? So, if there is no degradation, then it is an adaptable theme. The next property of port portability is installability. It should be easy to install and uninstall. If the product or system is to be installed by an end user, installability can affect the resulting functional appropriateness and operability. Hence, it is a property of portability. The third sub characteristic of portability is replaceability. So, I have a system in which there are several subsystems and I may want to replace one of them, one of the components with something else. So, that is considered a property of portability, the ability to replace some component. Okay. So, you, you can see that uh, it, it may sound strange, but it is it is under portability because uh, if it is not, then when I move the system to some somewhere else, I may only need to change only small parts of it, which are specific to that hardware environment. Right. Hence, if I can do that, then the whole system becomes portable. I may only change the hardware drivers, for example, and the whole system works, then it is a portable system. So, these are the various characteristics under product quality. What you should do as a homework is now try to classify any experience that you have when you encounter a subsystem, a human, a computer system is to see, look, I am not happy with the system or I am very happy with the system. So, this feeling that I have, the property that I have observed, to what quality attribute does it belong? Try to characterize it. You may find that sometimes it belongs to more than quali one quality attribute. But this is an exercise which will help you sharpen your observation skills and understand what quality attributes are. What you should do is to keep in front of you a printout of these two figures, this one and this one. Try to classify your experience into one of these characteristics. Thank you.